Hello and welcome. This is the Stories for Work book summary and review. The book is by Gabrielle Dolan. So let's get started. The Science of Storytelling The left side of the brain helps us think logically and organize our thoughts. The right side helps us re- feel emotions and recall memories. The reptile brain makes us act instinctively. The mammal brain helps us connect in relationships. We also have a neocortex, which is closely related to the limbic system. There are a myriad of connections between the limbic system and the neocortex. This is why emotions have great influence over the rest of the brain. Stories combine words, logic, images, and emotions. This causes our emotional minds to go into overdrive. And when we listen to stories, oxytocin, which is the trust, I think it's a neurotransmitter. I should have checked that, but I I think oxytocin is a neurotransmitter. But it's a chemical in the brain anyway that gives feelings of trust. Continued. According to brain scans, listening to a story is a lot like reliving the experience yourself. We tend to use emotions to make decisions and then logic to justify it afterwards. 90% of decisions are made by emotions. People with damaged emotional centers find themselves unable to make decisions. A case study is different from a story because they're more about facts and figures. One study found that using emotion in marketing campaigns was twice as effective as using logic. Emotion helps us remember things such as messages. The four story types you need. Triumph. Your own triumphs. How you've helped others triumph. And triumphs as part of the team or community. Tragedy. And that is stories of regret. Things that happened to you and things that were caused by you. Tension. This means conflict between your values, loyalties, or obligations. And transition. Stories where changes were forced upon you, where you decided to make the change, and when you instigated a transition. And I found this a little bit confusing. I couldn't make sense of what she means because deciding to make the change and instigating a transition seem to be the same thing. But here is the image of the story wheel she's devised. And so for each story type, triumph, tragedy, tension, and transition, you need three, at least three of each. And there's more, which we'll get into now. Two things your story must demonstrate. Authenticity. It had to actually happen to you. You'll you'll lose credibility if you take credit for other people's stories or if you make things up. Purpose. You need to have a reason for bringing up stories. It has to tie into a business situation or be relevant to the conversation or something. How to find stories. Like someone on a beach with a metal detector mining for treasure, you can mine your stories from your life. They're waiting just below the surface of your memory. And there's two approaches, one for work-related stories and one for personal stories. To... Discover work-related stories. List all of your jobs and various positions of your life. Then on a piece of paper for each of them, write down the triumphs, tragedies, tensions, and transitions that you can think of. Approach 2 for personal stories. Write down all the significant experiences in your life that you can think of. Then mark down whether it could be a story of triumph, tragedy, tension, or transition. To get good at storytelling, you need to practice writing them out. How to construct stories. Gabrielle gives a pretty basic story structure, which is the beginning, middle, and end. So for the beginning, you begin with a time and place. For the middle, you question. You need to question whether the details you include really need to be included. Is For example, is it relevant to the message? You need to avoid unnecessary facts and figures. 
Name the main characters, use words which really describe how you feel, and don't shy away from words like sad or scared. And end. Bridge your story back to the relevant business purpose, draw the link, and pause for effect. Stories can be used in presentations, times of change, sales, values and vision, personal branding, coaching, job interviews, and newsletters and blogs. And here's my review. The book was equal parts art and science, which I liked. It felt like there was a lot of padding in the form of example stories and case studies, which I've actually left out of this summary because they didn't they wouldn't have been very good, but these did add value as well. I'd probably rate it more highly if it was longer, but there may simply not be that much to write about when it comes to storytelling, so I'm conflicted. I really like the model of triumph, tragedy, tension, and transition. The story wheel was a nice try, but I think it was reaching a bit. For example, instigating and choosing a transition seemed like the same thing, so that's why it's reaching. The methods for mining stories were nice and easy to follow. I look forward to trying it out myself. The structure it gave for stories was very simple. Maybe too simple. It makes me wonder what else is out there in terms of more sophisticated storytelling structures. I was surprised at how basic the example stories were. Only a minute or two long and not hugely significant events usually and often the connection to business seemed tenuous. A lot of them didn't really capture my interest or attention that much. It really lowers the bar which is actually probably a good thing because I feel like I could come up with stories like that. Like I could come up with stories that were as good or better than the examples in the book. This was a very practical guide and I delivered what it promised but it wasn't that impressive as a book, so I give it three stars.